Hey there, welcome to the Traveling History Buff. Today, we're gonna to talk about German pioneers in Texas during the 1800s. I figured the best place to tell that story is right here in Fredericksburg, Texas. Behind me is the Varens Kier, or Society Church. The original building was built in 1847 and was demolished in 1897. It was a multifunctional building serving as a church and school. The current building was built in 1935 and now serves as a museum. German immigrants migrated to places like Texas to escape the high taxes and overpopulation in Germany at that time. Their earliest attempt at a German settlement in Texas came in 1812 when Morphy, the Spanish consul at New Orleans, proposed to the Spanish government that German and Polish soldiers be sent to Texas to serve as a buffer against Napoleonic aggressions. However, the plan failed because Mexico, who was ruled by Spain at that time, had claimed independence before any action on the plan was taken. Then, in 1830, Stephen F. Austin considered a plan to induce German and Swiss immigrants to Texas. He valued the character and industry of them, saying, They have not in general that horrible mania for speculation which is so prominent a trait in the English and North American character, and above all, they will oppose slavery. These and other early attempts to create a German settlement in Texas had failed. However, this did not stop some Germans from immigrating, and the idea lived on. Up to this point, most Germans settled along the coast in the more developed areas. One organization seek to change that. Organized in 1842 by 21 German noblemen, the Society for the Protection of German Immigrants in Texas, commonly known as Alders Weiren, intended to create a new German settlement. Their goal was to secure land to induce German immigrants into Texas. They were also interested in introducing German-made products to a new market and developing maritime opportunities. For $120 per person, or $240 per family, the Alders Weiren promised transportation and food for voyage, 320 acres of land per single man, or 640 acres per family, a warehouse at the site with supplies, establishment of schools and churches, and a return trip should they choose to leave. The voyage from Germany took two months. The ships were overcrowded, food was lacking, and disease was rampant. Some did not survive the voyage. Once the settlers arrived at Indianola, Texas, often referred to as Karlshofen, they had to wait up to 30 days for transportation inland, staying in tents on the beach. The society acquired some land known as the Fisher Miller Land Grant. It comprised 3 million acres between the Colorado and Llano Rivers. The need for towns along the road to the land grant soon became a priority. New Braunfels was the first town established by the Outers of Iron in 1845. The site was chosen by the first Commissioner General, Prince Karl of Salms Braunfels. Soon after its founding, Prince Karl left for Germany and never returned. According to the 1850 census, the population in town was 1,298, making it the fourth largest city behind Galveston, San Antonio, and Houston. On June 23, 1855, the Texas State Gazette wrote, The town of New Braunfels has a population of 3,500 inhabitants, principally Germans. Only eight American families have settled in the place. Although the first settlers were poor, yet by a few years of persevering industry and rigid economy, they have placed themselves in easy, and independent circumstances. John O. Musebach succeeded Prince Carl. He found the financial situation in disarray. There were massive debts and the society lacked organization. He soon brought order and settled as many debts as possible. His next order of business was to establish a second town closer to the land grant. That town was Fredericksburg. The first settlers arrived in 1846 and by 1850 the census claimed there were 750 people living in town. Five more towns were founded, all of them in the Fisher Miller land grant. Today, only one of them has survived. It was not easy for these settlers during the first few years. There were several epidemics that killed many of them, yet they persevered and the towns prospered. Today, New Braunfels and Fredericksburg are popular tourist destinations, filled with a rich history. Under Musebach's charge, over 5,000 German immigrants were brought to Texas and six towns were established. He resigned from his position in 1847. By the end of that year, the society was facing bankruptcy. In 1853, the company assigned all its properties and colonization rights to its creditors. While the society was short-lived, the work they accomplished was nothing short of remarkable. They opened up a whole new area for German settlers and established several thriving towns. One other interesting note is the Germans' relations with the Indians. Musebach helped to establish a treaty among the Comanches, one that was never broken. 
The Musebach Comanche Treaty allowed settlers to go unharmed into Indian territory and the Indians to go to the white settlements. This helped ease tensions and provided safety for the settlers. Well, that's all for this episode. I'll see you guys next time.